Hello, everyone, and welcome back to yet another episode, another week of the off season. We got quite the show today. We have some stories. Appreciate y'all for submitting them. I had a ton of stories to go through. Super excited about that. So if you're listening to this and you want to either kick off the episode or in the episode, or you want to hear a topic or whatever, check the link in the description down below. Submit your stories. Submit your topics. Maybe you just want to say something random. Throw that in there too. And uh, you might find yourself be a part of the show. But we're going to kick it off with a uh, quick word from our sponsor. All right, ballers, it's time to get your game face on because Manscaped is dropping some serious heat this season. Meet the Chairman Pro Package, the ultimate grooming kit to keep your face smooth and sharp, whether you're courtside or couchside. This kit's a dual threat. Whether you want a clean-cut, babyface assassin look or you're going for that rugged stubble like your favorite power forward, the Chairman Pro gets it done. And it's not just about shaving. The Power Shave Gel and Face Shave Soother make sure that post-game glow is just as smooth as your moves on the court. Get the Chairman Pro Package today and score 20% off of free shipping with code Debate night at manscaped.com. Your grooming game will never miss a shot again. This thing features two interchangeable blades, a four blade foil, and a stubble trimmer. Plus, it has flex adjust technology to make sure there's no more razor burn fouls going on out there. The stubble adjustment lets you keep that rugged look. And you can find all of this and more by heading over to manscaped.com and joining the over 11 men worldwide with code. 11 million that was that was a little deceptive 11 million men have not used the code i was about to say 11 million men trust manscaped mm. but you can join them I'm by using those. code I'm debate night for 20 percent off and free shipping at manscaped.com thanks again to manscaped for sponsoring not just this show but pretty much everything we do at foundation huge supporters right. of what we have going on we're going to kick this show off with a little story from our beloved shay stevens should we do a uh, prediction yeah. first oh okay would anyone Pretty- like to call the presidential race I would not. We are we are (laughs) filming this on Tuesday, November fifth. Silas, any predictions? I'm not getting in this. I don't have a prediction. (laughs) All right, prediction. Uh, I I I wrote in Brody Smith, so I you know fingers crossed. That's good. Uh, Me too. How how many? (laughs) This is actually a good question. How many write-ins do you think you will have? In, your in the president's election, zero. Yes. zero. Very confident. You don't think well, anyone in your entire no. life will write well, you in? Well, if we talk no. about it on a podcast, probably Trevor would get a few. Yeah, but right. I don't think we'd yeah, ever do that. That seems to be not. a little bit against democracy if we're like right in Trevor stuff. I did get a. I did. <laughs> well, what are you talking about? That's literally what literally every politician's doing. That's I did fair. Get hey, a, are you uh, voting? I don't know. Vote for me. What do you? What people are just yelling at people to vote for them, they have no idea who they're voting uh, for. That's literally I what got they're a doing. Fan Instagram account, cre- that's true. Trevor does stuff. have a fan account. I'm on my it's way, like the Stob Mobsters or something like that. Stob Mobbers, something Stop like that. Mobbers. Honestly, I, I don't think I got a fan account. Does that mean I can get I, verified now? <laughs> I think if someone like got written in and was just like a super dark horse person, they actually might be a decent president, just like some rando off the street, yeah, because they're like. <laughs> I don't know. They don't have an agenda. Or okay, I, they'd probably I quickly have back. an agenda. I take that real back. quick. I take <laughs> that back. Yeah, they'd find an agenda. Yes. Well, there, would also be, real quick. there would also be people being like, "Hey, do you want a million dollars?" Exactly. Yeah. Do you want yeah, a trillion dollars? That's a terrible idea. That's <laughs> yeah. a terrible, terrible, terrible yeah. idea. Well, from this story comes from our recently named Heiser Club Member of the Year, voted on by his peers, Shay Stevens great award uh so he said if you play a course in a public park you've likely encountered someone who didn't know what disc golf baskets were for they think they're deer feeders dog leash tethers etc well (laughs) one round i found a park goer who found another use for them i stepped to the tee on hole 27 at tyler state park with the basket in the a position you can just see the basket over the hill and i noticed the old mach 3 was looking a little shinier than normal While setting down my bag, I saw a pedestrian near the basket, but he walked towards the parking lot to the right. So with the way clear, I threw a shot to around 25 feet left of the basket. I walked up the fairway, proud of myself, and I began to smell something delicious. He's not grilling on the basket. As I crest the hill, I see the bottom of the basket and chain supporter lined with aluminum foil. The (laughs) bottom of the basket's filled with lit charcoal, and there's barbecue blasted chicken tied in the chains. And there's corn on the cobs on top of the chain support. I'm dumbfounded. I look to the right of the parking lot, and I see the guy I saw from the tee, and a few other people are having a picnic, and they thought the basket was a grill. This was around 2015 before I formally joined the course club and I had no idea how to handle it. So I just picked up my disc and kept walking to the next hole without the picnickers yeah. noticing. You can't to this anything. day, I wonder what would have happened had I aced it. 
Oh my gosh! So he was like going rotis- rotisserie on the, yeah, on with the chain, some too. chicken off the chain. That's and had the lit coal. because when you he said has that, to have been like international, right? That's a when lot of said, effort for I don't like know. I, you had to wrap I mean, the whole bottom to even be able to well, hold the here's charcoal. The thing, Brody, whenever whenever Hunter mentioned, whenever Hunter mentioned like what somebody who didn't like what somebody who didn't know what a disc golf basket was for would think it is, grill popped into my mind. I'm not really? even lying. Like it has I, a because, grill. Shape. Because you see freestanding like metal grills that are yeah. pretty like dark horse chains. looking anyways. That's what I'm saying. I think you have to a be weird a, one. I think you have to be a foreigner for you to look at that and be or like it, it might just be someone who just know. has never grilled in their life and they're just like, Yeah, you yeah, go to the park well, and you no, they, grill they, they, and it's like here it is. This is the grill everyone's talking or about. Or they just were such a good griller that they're like, I don't even care if this is a grill or not, it's gonna be it one. maybe yeah, it's, maybe I it's got just the best like, idea ever. They maybe might have known just, exactly what it was. Maybe it's an Iron Chef, and he's like, I've always wanted to grill out on a disc golf basket. That guy, we're going to see the YouTube video. I guess it was 2015. That's. I'm starting to think we might need to to do this now. The the disc golf grill, like, cook-off, and we'll get our, one of our own baskets, not it use would a public be, part. It would be a funny punishment to, like, Here's get Here's a question, though. Was he just, get, what was he using for the heat source? I can't hear Hard you guys cycle. at all. I can, hmm? oh, Brody, Brody's gone. Oh. Silas the fix. Oh, Silas the fix, man. Brody's gone. Can you hear me, Trevor? Yeah. Okay. Are you guys each other fine? Yeah. You guys yeah. all sound like robots. The fix. Are you good? Are we back? Are you back? Brody's gone. Brody's gone. <laughs> Hello. This, this might be the death of Vito. Silas. Oh, wait, we're back. We're back. Back. Oh, we're, we're back, back now. Oh, okay. What'd you do, Silas? Kind of. I didn't do anything. I, I can hear you guys. Okay. Okay. All right, we're back. We never. I will say I'm my, now my at upload, ten megabytes. My upload went red. <laughs> <laughs> my upload went red for a minute there, so I don't know. But Mind okay, well. I'll just pick up with what I was about to say. You guys both went straight robots there for like a minute. Weird. It's a new internet um, connection. Anyways, I think it'd be hilarious to get the park's permission and like replace the basket before this or something, but um, but make it where like that's a punishment is you have to go to a disc golf course and grill out on a certain oh hole. Oh my gosh! And just like you, you get to see what the people who play though. through see what the people who play through say. Or I do. would be scared. I'd be like we'd learn a lot about the disc golf community because some people would be like. Like I, it wouldn't take many cards for somebody to freak out at you. Yeah, it'd just be oh, hilarious. Like because you're damaging like the basket. dollars or something, or three hundred dollars for like a Prodigy T2. So we That's buy what, it, we put it yeah. in it peaks you like hole three, and then we just nice. start grilling out on it and just see, see what I'm happens. I'm just dying to know how they were like. What did they light a fire charcoal. under the basket? They had charcoal. Oh, they had, the they had poured yeah. charcoal in the bottom. Oh, the bottom yeah. I understand. He's putting his meat in the chains, which is just yeah, like he, he hung his meat in the chain and had the the bottom was filled I with charcoal. Understand. Yeah, the, that's, that's charcoal. a good design. The, that's foolproof. Wildest thing I have is um hole one at McCord has this like beautiful tree right in front of the basket. And it's like um one of those that's like coming. Obviously, it's coming out of the ground, but instead of the trunk going up, it's like immediately going out to the left. Yeah. So it's like perfect to like for people to sit on and do that. It's like the number one spot, I swear, for like high school photos. Uh, and so like you would just show up there and there'd just be a huge photography setup. And you're just like, we've had a lot of uh, people like a lot of hammocks. hanging up Enos or hammocks in the middle of fairways, especially yeah. at at uh one course on campus that was kind of the uh the spot for couples to go hang that thing up and you know we'd you'd be walking down hole nine as well walking down hole nine just be like all right well we're here i don't know what to do here so just pick up and keep walking <laughs> like in the middle of the fairway move it on move it on yeah Basket all right that's the intro that's story awesome. let's talk through episode two and three now that both episodes have come out of the imposter series so episode two happened over at sandusky park episode three happened at camp hideaway if you are watching the series and you haven't watched either of those episodes now is your chance to skip forward um and skip all the because there's gonna be spoilers skip in this you see a picture video. of an amateur somewhere yeah, once you on see someone throwing some discs <laughs> see someone throwing a disc you're good you've made it past it um 
but yeah, because now we're gonna we're gonna talk through it. So episode one, Josh White from Overthrow was eliminated. We move into episode two, head to Sandusky Park. There's a feeling in the air that the imposter's gone. The vibes are high. Play is going great. Really pretty uneventful round until midway through, if I remember correctly, is when Gary misses the first putt, and then Gary misses a second putt, and then Gary misses a third putt, or that maybe it was after the second that then Brody has the step right. putt heard around the world that goes OB. No, and then step Gary misses the, very, the comeback. No, step putt. Yeah, step putt's the very, very last. Yeah, 17, that was Gary's third putt. And then Gary, I think that was Gary's third missed putt was the comeback from that. Backs mm-hmm. up against the wall. Got a birdie 18. Don't do it. Walk us through, specifically, obviously, we can't talk about Gary. We'll get y'all's perspective on Gary through that. But Brody, talk about hole 17, that step putt. Everyone was accusing you of it being imposter activity. After mm-hmm. you watch it back, what was going on through your head? What, what were you thinking? Honestly, if I could go back in time, I wish I could just throw a scuba underneath the basket. That makes sense. Um, I'm trying to remember if there was any thought of like, because obviously if I make that putt, we don't miss the line at all. Correct. You lay it, it up, almost, we don't miss it, the line at all. It almost makes it impossible for us to miss the line. I think I was, <laughs> if you lay it up, see, that's, that's what I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember. If you laid it up, we would have needed par par on the last hole to win. I don't know now, if that's a, now, I don't know if that's not, a given with how Gary's putting and how you things had not were happening. Seen, you had not seen us make the putt for Eagle yet. So that's that is I think that was your main counterpoint. Also, was. Joel was throwing the tee shot on hole 18. So I, I I think going back, I think there was some doubt on going par par, but I think ultimately it was more of a selfish thing of me being like, I want to make this putt well i think it is almost and be the one to seal it what's funny is connor and i both have the same recollection of this where me in the moment no you have different of this part in the moment connor and i didn't think it was suspicious at all we were but we were both like yeah of course he ran the putt and when people started bringing it up that it was suspicious i was like what are people thinking like you got to run that putt and then when i watched it back i was like why did i feel that way i think that Maybe we thought the bur- the eagle putt was farther, um, a ri- and when we were on the ground, like maybe that was the thought process. Like maybe we didn't think of the that next putt that they're about to make as like a tap in, um, because it basically was the, the mm. eagle tap in. So maybe there was like doubt around. Do like you're are we going to make bir- that? One? You're saying the birdie? No, I thought the other one was, was for an, eagle. It was an eagle. Our that putt was, was for drive. eagle. Both they're putts both were for eagle. eagle. My drive was the one that went to like 15 feet. That was the one that we made. I wasn't on your team. Oh, who's I was? Who's I putting from? I believe it was Josh's drive. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You actually had a really good shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. I think it was either a mix of that or for some reason, I just remember Connor and I both thinking like we didn't question it for a second. And then when people started questioning it at the table and in the voting, we were surprised because I was like, what? Like, it was, and I also distinctly remember it flat skipping off the top of the basket. So that's what I, I remember. Thought it actually too. Skipped I like the top swore top it did. I don't know if it's it just didn't. an optic and it like it did and we can't see it somehow. I, no, but like when I watched video, it back, it didn't it did. skip. But we, I like, yeah, we all I just convinced ourselves that it did. Yeah. Yeah. We like all convinced because that's what I kept telling people too. Is I was like, it, it flat skipped off the top. Like it, that was just the worst reaction it could get when it actually just sailed over the top, which is yeah, crazy. The, the behind the scenes too of that for like a little more Intel, my miss with a stepper when I haven't been practicing. And like I said, I think the day before we, or was that the same day? That was the same day. It was that afternoon. Okay. So I had, I, that was my first day playing disc golf since D which was over a month prior. That was my first stepper in probably 35 days. My stepper, when it's like rusty like that, that is my miss. That was definitely not playing in my head. You don't really want to have those thoughts in your head. You just think you're going to make everything. So, again, um, the other thing that was kind of comical. Oh, we have the the clip. Oh, here we go. We got the footage. The other thing that was kind of comical was um, I thought the, the road was OB. 
Yeah. yeah. Now, obviously, it landed on the road, so it didn't matter. But I wonder if I if I had known the fences were OB, I don't think I would have changed anything. Still, I think I would have tried to step her in there as well. But I, well, I, wonder, I, I, I am changing. I think I am changing going into this next season. I don't think I'm going to be step putting from uh, like 35, 40 feet. I, I do. It also makes it it made sense to me, too, from the control aspect of like that almost in the moment obviously now we have it was missed but in the moment it almost seems more likely for you to make that 35 footer than for like if you missed it and there's pressure on the drives for the drives to be executed i just think that it rolling ob and the comebacker being missed was just like the worst case scenario that was not on anyone's mind yeah because we were we were struggling getting up and down like literally the last couple holes. So I think yeah, that was definitely that was playing slipping. into my head of where it's like, Hey, if we're 80 feet away from the basket, it's not a guaranteed. And I also was not going to throw a single shot on that final hole. Yeah. This is your last, your last, that was, like that was so it's like everyone else had to do it. And so, yeah, I think it was selfish on my part to do it. Um, now, but, as soon as know. that happened, right, it goes, OB, were you like, you immediately said, well, I'm out. Yeah. Was that did that ride through? Like, were you just were you surprised when the voting happened and you were still in after that episode? Uh yes. Yes. Because there was already like a lot of people talking. I, I, I don't think people really realized that I was coming off my worst season in disc golf and I wasn't practicing or playing at all that year. So like I was not very good at disc golf during that filming. And so I think a lot of people had expectations that I was going to be a lot better. And so, yeah, when I missed that putt, I thought it was a no brainer. It was almost like if I made one big mistake like that, I was going to be voted yeah. out. I also think too, people didn't understand the lines. Yeah. The lines were adjusted based on the skill level. So that doesn't mean if you vote out the best player that all of a sudden it's going to be a lot easier. Like the lines are going to be adjusted, but up until that point too, Having me, I think you guys maybe were adjusting the lines too much for like the me first, being in there. When the first in fact, two like, lines I don't, were I don't set, have a huge impact. The first two lines were set blind. We didn't know how people were going to be. We didn't okay. know skill level of anyone. The only skill we knew was you, Trevor, Josh Alcock. Those were our three we knew. And so we were just kind of blind guessing on. We had seen some Instagram throws. We had seen like what people had, how good people had said they were, yeah. and that was it. So the first two lines were kind of a miracle; they were even close because we yeah, just because threw I was, them at a wall. My my the first round, I pretty much just didn't do anything, uh, like throwing wise. And then the second round, um, other than like making some putts, which I actually did. If you go back and watch, like I made a lot of like 28, 35, uh, 30 footers yeah. in the beginning of that round. Uh, but that course just isn't very challenging. So yeah, I mean, I, as soon as I missed that putt and the way, and then once we obviously didn't hit the line, I thought it was a no brainer that I was, I was going to go home. Now but, Trevor on the other side shocked. of that, uh, that interaction, I don't, you didn't vote for Brody. If I remember correctly, no. why, why, like, what was your, your logic where you, that's <laughs> that step putt. Was it really suspicious to you? And you were just like, okay, right. I'll keep that in the back of my mind or, or where were you at? So at that point, I had not seen anything else from Brody's game or attitude that pointed to him being the imposter. I did like it definitely, it was on my radar because of like, I even mentioned it, but like it was just so shocking when it happened because we had thought that we had won it. Like that's, that's where our minds were. Like we were walking this in and all of a sudden it's like, wait a second, we have to get up and, and make it happen on 18. So it was a very jarring moment and you could definitely feel that. But when I, I was going into the voting table basically like, okay, that's something to keep note of, but I don't think we want to vote off our best player yet. I don't like, I think we need to, I needed to see more. I expected the table to be much against that. And they, I was surprised to find that they weren't. Um, Everybody was seemingly on the same page that they weren't going to vote them out for that. And instead they were still committed to, basically trying to find oh, the weakest link. And I think that was kind of the common theme there. So I kind of went in ready to think, kind of thinking to myself, like, 
you know, I maybe will put up a little bit of a fight here, but Brody, they're probably going to gonna vote him out no matter what. And yeah, when I started discussing, when well, I was kind of like, oh, like, I guess that's not the theme. So we're just going to, we're just going to kind of go with what's going on because that was what I had intended to do anyways. Like everybody kind of was aligned with me still. Yeah. If I remember correctly, that vote had two people not vote in the five people that did vote went two for Gary, two for Joel, one for Brody. Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't, remember. Well, I didn't, also, I didn't vote. I mean, either. the Gary, the Gary missing all those putts was. We gotta also, talk about that. Yeah, that was a huge smokescreen for Brody. Well, it was as also well. what was most confusing about that is, obviously, for the people at home watching, there's a week between the episodes, but for us living it, there was like 30 minutes 30 between minutes. the rounds. Yeah, and the yeah, guy yeah. was hot. He could not miss a putt that first round. Granted, when you watch it back, they were all very soft, like barely going in. So you could tell. Okay, maybe right. he's a little timid. But he seemed like putting's his thing. And then round two comes, pressure gets on him a little bit, and the the putting went out the window completely. But well, yeah, the, my, yeah. The thing the thing is too with Gary and the the putting woes is the when I was looking at it, you can you could like the the nerves and the devastation that he was showing all over himself was it would be very hard to fake. And the like almost urgency that he was defending himself with in the voting room to me communicated a guy that was knew he was in a bad spot, but I wasn't really, it was never overly suspicious to me because I, I think you missed the first yeah. one and the first putt is a putt that is very much missable. And I think most of us kind of turned away like, Ooh, bummer, but like not a huge deal. But the second you've now missed a putt and the lids off the basket, and now you're looking at the really short one, that second putt, like, it's all you know it's going to be worse if you miss it and now it's kind of playing in your head like oh what if i miss this putt and so i wasn't surprised to see those things um and that's always just an interesting thing with these imposter type videos is like how much of the analysis from the contestants is psychology versus just what they're seeing black and white like okay brody misses a huge putt gary misses three putts like that's the black and white of it, but what are they showing on their face? What are their, how are they reacting to it off the camera and, and trying to plead their case? Like that's the kind of things that really shows yeah. you who's who. Yeah. That's what, that's what I was going to say is like, I think too many people were looking into actually like just the X's and O's of like the throws and no right. one, including myself was is good enough and or consistent enough to where you could really do that. Like I, I do not believe Gary was purposely barely missing those because it wasn't yeah. like he was clanking into no. the basket or airballing it. So there's that. And then the other thing to look in too is like, if I was the imposter, that would be the stupidest thing ever for me to airball that putt. Like that, that makes no sense. It's at the end of the round. Uh, everyone would, I would have, I would literally have an X on and we'll get into it here in, in episode three but I would have a huge X on my back after that. Yeah. That would make no sense for me to do that. And uh, the last thing too is like, that doesn't even necessarily guarantee someone, all, the, all that needed to happen is one person needed to throw a good shot on the last yeah. hole and we would have made the line. And they had yeah. and they had a putt. They had a pretty yeah, good putt at it too. So it wasn't even like that would have guaranteed that I was going to win however much money that would have been. And then, hey, I get voted out Well. I just won however much money the impo you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it did it, I think that was part of the gameplay that was missing uh from this cast. Yeah. And uh the final behind the scenes part of episode two as we had in episode three was I had when we explained the rules, we went to like a more in-depth explanation off camera and I answered questions. And one of the things I had said was like the majority rules on voting, if voting splits early on, I'm gonna let both people stay in. If voting splits late, both people could be going home. That's going to be a like game time decision. Yeah. So that was also something where I, there might not have been a. I saw some people in, confused in the comments a little bit of why both people stayed. That was kind of a already people knew it Just more so because if the cast got shrunk too quickly, then we could have ended up you know with uh, the potential of like if you if you had every tie go, there would have been potential of like two people in the finale if it was like two people, two people getting, keep getting voted off. So that was the reason it was that way. And people and, knew that going into the votes. That's why there wasn't like some shock of two people are staying. And the reason I didn't vote there either was because I didn't want to vote someone and they get voted out versus me because, you know, even though I wanted to stay in the game, I didn't think it was fair because I was the sole reason 
you know, say what you want with Gary, but I was the sole reason we didn't hit the line. Um, and so I, you know, if I was gonna get voted out, it is what it is. I didn't want That's why I didn't want to vote for anyone that round. I do think it makes sense if you are not the imposter to knock people out. Um, but that's the reason why is because if I had, if, if I would have made that putt, I would have voted something out, even yeah. though there was no one in that round that really stood out to me as an imposter. I still would have voted someone out. The reason I didn't vote is because I felt bad because uh, I just lost everyone 500 bucks or wh- that, whatever. That it makes was. sense. So now we head into episode three. We go over to Camp Hideaway. The rain comes down. First thing out of my mouth when we got there is the imposter still among y'all. The that honestly wasn't originally part of the plan to let people know if the imposter was still there. But I, smart too, though. I felt it necessary because there was this general feeling, and there's even a general feeling in the audience, which is hilarious. That's why I'm, I'm really glad I did it, that Josh was the imposter. Yeah. And so there was that general feeling of the imposter's gone. Let's all hold hands. No one vote anymore, and we'll cruise in, and we can all split the pot. Um, would that have still been great? Sure. But it, I think it would have made the next several episodes pretty bad. Um, and it actually is working out, like I said, because every poll we've ran of who do you think is the imposter for the first two episodes, everyone's just hot on Josh's tail. Like they're like, we already got the, yeah. the imposter's already gone. Josh is gone. We're good. So I felt like that was a good drama building moment. And it also put everyone back on edge heading into Camp Hideaway, where it was kind of the opposite of the start at Sandusky. Real slow start. Rocky, rocky start, if I remember Terrible. correctly, um, to the point that the uh, happy with par integration shout out to them was supposed to be you could spend some money to get pick like a, one of the hardest holes just walk away with a par but the line was nowhere close to being hit so no, when you instead. said when you said that line i was like we're not hitting this do you know like again <laughs> we just were not that great as a team yeah. and the conditions were terrible. You were also that format is potentially the worst format because you're what throwing was the format. It was the you're was throwing a shot? shot every 45 minutes yeah. is the format. Yeah. So the worst uh, state so is cold, rainy, yeah. and you're just standing around for 45 minutes waiting to throw your that one shot. That is one shot. adjustment I want to make for next year is this year I locked in the formats pre going into rounds. And so I had like fa- factored in one person's going home every round essentially. Mm. So there was one more person there than intended. So we all had seven still instead of having six there, which would have at least helped it a little bit going to the, the straight all shot. But I think next year having a list of like, these formats and then a pivot format of if there's still eight people going into round three, this is the format we're going with and so on and so forth. But yeah. regardless, the happy with par integration, we pivoted it. They were able to pay the imposter what ended up being, I believe $150 to get back to even par essentially yeah. just yeah, bought, we were, bought the bogeys out. I was like, we were kind of on the brink of death no-brainer. at that point. Like we had already been losing a bunch and we just felt like we were on our way to another loss. So getting that back, I think was like what kind of pushed us in in that round because like Brody said, that format was just gruesome. And because the, the thing is, you know, what, what, what ended up happening is, you know, an alt shot is beautiful in imposter in the sense that you do put people on a platform, like you're wholly responsible for this. And I think it creates opportunities if somebody were the imposter to basically throw a shot that nobody can reverse, but it also puts a ton of pressure on everybody. And when you have all those players in that pressure cooker, in those conditions, you almost got this sympathetic attitude around a lot of the shots being like, <laughs> like nobody was really expecting much. We were just trying to scrape our way through the course. And that's just kind of how it went. But we were able to have a lot more success once we could get those few holes erased and just yeah. move on from there. Yeah, y'all played y'all, solid after that and ended up being yeah. the first line that was actually hit in the successful sense. Um, yeah. So the first one that wasn't missed. And, you know, to be honest with you, as I was watching through, because I was kind of, I haven't watched the full episode back through, um, but I clicked through to kind of get the thumbnail screenshots. I don't really remember anything like that drastic or diabolical happening that really, really There's put... one thing. There's one thing. All right. What was it, Brody? The one thing that stood out, which I don't know why we cut this. Maybe we didn't have, maybe we didn't film it. So maybe okay. we weren't able to put it in there, but it was whatever that hole was with the rocks, all the, mm-hmm. with the basket and on top I of the rock. Oh, uh, and- there was a discussion there. And- uh, Gary was putting, who is probably one of our best putters, but he wasn't putting that great. 
uh, the round this. before, but he was starting to put good again. Larkin was like super for Gary trying to make this putt. Yeah, I do remember this and, now. And I, I was I had to talk him off the ledge there. I was literally saying absolutely not. Like basically saying like if you miss this putt, you're gonna put Trevor in a bad spot that he probably misses the bat the comebacker. Yeah, like made a putt all day. Of the time. So that was the one thing, and that's what I'm saying is like it's re- like he had some really bad throws. He had I think like two really bad forehands. He did have the worst round for sure. But I can't look at how someone's playing because everyone's bad. Everyone's inconsistent. So like that's the one thing I think about this this format that like doesn't. It's very hard for the imposter is because everyone's in- inconsistent. The only thing you can really go off of is like if anyone actually comes out and says something. And uh, yeah, he said that Gary should run it. And I thought that was a crazy move. And I told Gary, absolutely not. Gary lays up. We tap in, we move forward and we hit the line. Um, So we didn't need Gary to make that putt. But that was the one thing that jumped out at me um, as imposter like play. But again, it's like it's so important. That is the only thing that I think is the downside of the show is that it is very difficult to have any idea who's actually the imposter. Yeah um so that's then also we, the upside that's also the upside but yeah, <laughs> yeah. then we head into yeah, the voting and th- today was actually my first time of watching this go down and it had to be brody's first time because yeah. me connor and brody are in the interview room with brody when the table talk that led to brody going home goes down yeah which is kind of wild i had no idea this even happened <laughs> until connor called me over and was like as soon as brody goes in there the table all turns on him and I was yeah. like, what? And then we start watching it. What was your reaction to watching that, Brody? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, you can go back and forth. I mean, I, there, I'm sure there's going to be some people that are going to be like, you shouldn't really be able to talk once the voting happens or talk once someone's already left. That that started, though, in episode one. Like, that was happening all throughout. Yeah. So this wasn't the first episode that it did. But it definitely seemed like as soon as I left, Trevor kind of, uh, switch the table on, Hey, let's vote Brody out, which again, like I was expecting to get voted out in episode two. Was I surprised to get voted out this one? Yeah. Um, but I wasn't surprised. Now could I have done two things I want to bring up one? Could I have said, Hey, I'm going to do the Mikey. Hey, I'm going to split my money with everyone. Right. Which to be honest, I don't really think you should say, be able to say stuff like that. Like they make a lot of rules in these games where you can't split money because had I said, Hey guys, I don't need the money. You guys need the money. I'll split it. And so you are not split it. I'll give you all more money. They're obviously going to want to keep me around. So a, I don't think that should be allowed in rule in the, in, in the game. And then the second thing too, that would be is interesting is there's a group of four guys in the game. Yeah. that all traveled that are all staying in Airbnb. And this is the first time that's brought up in the series where they're talking about, well, I don't know if I want to vote someone out that has traveled like this. So the, that's the other part. Like that's more of a behind the scenes. How do we deal with that going forward? Cause you don't really want to have, well, Hey, this guy traveled the farthest to come do this comp. You don't hear about that in other reality shows of like this guy traveled, like everyone's traveling everyone's sacrificing their time. The one thing that does come out is like the sympathy thing. Like I have kids, I'm a single mom. I need the money. You hear that sometimes in reality shows, but if that, if you want to play that card, I think that is fine to say like, Hey, I need the money. The card that shouldn't be allowed to play is like, Hey, I have so much money. This money doesn't matter to me. If you let me stay on, I'll give you the money. Like I think that kind of ruins is ruins the spirit of the game. For sure. And we did, we've discussed post the show going forward because we'll always have people coming in town for whatever reality series we do going forward. And so that is something you have to like factor in. This year, what was tough was there were so many unknowns for us of like, how is this show going to go? So we couldn't really like up front. I told everyone when they applied, like, hey, we've sold the show to basically be able to give out the $5,000 prize. Like that's what we've sold the show for and sold the show to. We don't know how the show is going to do. We don't know, you know, is there going to be other sponsors that get on? So you're coming in with the chance of winning that money. And that's all we can promise right now. We can't promise, you know, paying for hotels. We can't promise that stuff. 
now that the show's been successful and next year is going to be easier to sell, we also now know what the back, like how the reception is going to be, how the monetization is going to be. That's something where now we can get different hotel rooms or get an Airbnb that like, Hey, everyone's in this and we have cameras in it. So if yeah. there is at night discussion going on, make sure a GoPro's on you or something. Cause that um, was, that, that was, it too. yeah. Cause that was happening, which yeah. Again, I think is, you know, coming from a love is blind guy that loves love is blind. One of the things that sucks about that show is some of these people, which it makes sense. They're like, this is their lives. They're trying to marry this person. Some of these people, though, they have these conversations that are really important off camera. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they're in a fight. And you're like, you have it's Chelsea basically thrown in his face, and you're, yeah, it's, it's like, it's what? Basically, yeah, it's basically producers telling them, like, hey, we know you had a fight yesterday, but we need you to bring it back up because we didn't get it. Yeah. So all of a sudden, you're thrown in. You have no context. I think that is one. I don't think it's Miss Super. I think people are still liking the series, but these four guys that are staying in the Airbnb, they're talking yeah. outside yeah. of the game. The, the, yeah, so what, we're what missing happened, that because what happened pre-voting. I knew that those four were going to basically be a coup and you and I, Brody, were going to always be the biggest outsiders being the foundation people. So I was really trying to get a feel over those last two episodes, episode two and three of where is, are their heads at? Because I feel like I need to align with them or they're just going to throw me out and throw you out as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And so what really happened was I was kind of, like after you messed up at Sandusky, I was basically gauging, okay, where is everybody's heads at with Brody? Because if I try to side with Brody, because I, I, at that point, I just didn't think it was you. And also I just wanted to keep you around for our team. They, that might just look ridiculous and people might single me out for that. So I was kind of feeling out the crowd during the round, like, Hey, where are we thinking? Where are we thinking? And because I was hearing enough people, basically the idea was we, we're going to not need you as badly for the course featured in episode four, which yeah, have to the next to course, Tim Brooks, like the but we were going to maybe, so that was kind of where people's heads were at. So that led me to basically jump into that meeting and just try to lead the charge because I knew that's where people were leaning. And I did not want to be the outcast of that situation. Yeah. yeah what was tough too, is you had the four guys, from the outside looking because, in, as from a producer well, because, standpoint, you had the four who were staying in the Airbnb and then Mikey promising to give them money, which basically yeah. puts yeah. him in the Airbnb. Yeah. And, and then me and Brody. guys and then Brody and, forget, and, and Trevor at that point. Well, forget the imposter. At the end of the day, you know, if the imposter gets tossed. That's one thing. But then it's still how many people are we going to split this money with? Right. Yeah. So that's what I'm thinking is we can get rid of this imposter. Am I going to make it in this group? Like that's, that's where my head is. So that that's where that comes from is like, I'm just trying to align myself with them and kind of be mesh with that group. So that wraps up episode three, Brody got voted off. Um, and then we headed into episode four, which you'll see next week. And, uh, you know, what I really am excited for people to see is the last two imposter formats. Because I, in my opinion, I think there's some of the the better. I think Worst Shot is a great one now that we've seen it play out. Um, but yeah. I really think the next two feature more singles play, we'll, we'll say. And I think that that really allows the imposter to have their way, um, if you will. The finale format is electric. So, yeah, I'm very excited for people to watch how those go. Because what this is also doing is Imposter's not going anywhere. Like, we're still going to film Imposter videos. We'll let it breathe for a decent bit after the series. I'd say. But it also lets us, like, we've now done, by the end of this, five rounds of yeah. different formats of Imposter. And we now know, oh, this is the one that definitely hits home the most. Um, so that lets us make our future Imposter videos better, too. So I'm really excited for that. But I know what everyone at home is waiting for. I know what y'all are waiting for. It's time for the guest, the division, and rating game. Trevor's up 1-0 on the season right now. Um, let's oh. just jump. Oh, oh. I was oh. going to say, someone someone did have a good point, which I think we should adjust. Okay. So they said um, that we should, without talking, me and Trevor should write down what our guesses are. Oh, just text it to me. I think we did or, this last year. We did yeah, this cause, last year. Cause then, then we can, <laughs> then we, yeah. Cause then we can talk about it without influencing the other person's guess. Yeah. So okay. then so yeah, that way, cause people were saying like, 
you know, the, we're kind of influencing what the other person's going to say. So we sure. should just, we should just like text that. it to we'll you. Get, wait, we are, we'll get better gaps between our guesses. Yeah. That way. Let's, Cause let's then once one person says seven fifty, then you're kind of like, Oh, maybe yeah. 775. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So do y'all want to do All that right. for the division two or just for the rating? I think, I think, I think just for two. the rating. Cause division, we can guess the same thing. Yeah. Division. Y'all can both lock in the same thing. Well, I mean, we could do both, I guess. I think uh, we just do both right let's off just the rip this time. You, yeah. Okay. You just show us the photo. Right. First this, picture. Let's bring yeah. it up here. Side guy. Okay, here we go. Oh this my. one is him here. We've got Jonathan Vestnez. Jonathan Vestnez out of Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Uh, he's been a member since 2021. He's played mm. 10 total career events and has Ooh. zero career wins. Okay. Hmm. Reach back is Wait, in no, a decent you text, place there. Text, text. Well, I'm still... Okay. Oh, you want me to text? No, you got to text and first, word? and then once we both submit, then we can talk. So Gosh, that way, there's I gotta, no. Now I got to make a gut reaction, or else it's going to be dead saying. silence. You can't do any influencing. Yeah, we got reactions going on here. You can't do it. No influencing. All right. Well, I I've will texted. say. I will I've say texted. this. Uh, okay. Both texts are in. Oh, Brody's texted both. Wow. Trevor yeah, only you texted text both. I like it. All right, no, Trev. That's a lot of thinking to do without talking it out on on the show. You can. You can also, Brody, if you want to. I'll allow this to happen. Because I will reveal the division as I typically do before you guess the rating, because that yeah, might that's... influence what people are guessing. So Brody's right. division's to, locked in. The, the Your comment was not. just, yeah, the comment yeah. was just to. Uh, I think to text make me it the so division as the first fluent. guess. So y'all are both locked in there. And okay. then once the divisions are revealed, if you want to change your rating, you can, or you can be like, I'm going blind, locked in. Yeah, I'm so, not going to text my rating yet. Do you? Want, should I reveal what y'all said? Well, should we? When do we talk? When do we talk describe? It out, talk it? it out. Describe what you're thinking here. Because <laughs> I don't want to give him. Like, like that's the only better. thing is I don't want to give him details of what I'm thinking. Well, describe what you're thinking because I don't I'm need your reveal, details. I'm going to reveal. I gave the you division. all my details. I'm going to reveal the division after this, so you're not giving anything away. Okay, this is clearly a guy that's watched YouTube videos of people telling you how to throw. I, I completely agree. Do y'all get the think, feeling that this is a staged picture? Or do you think he's actually mid throw? Ooh, that's a because when I was looking point. at it, I don't see a lot of movement ooh. going on below the hips. I no, see I a think, very. I think I think this is a throw. Okay, that I, I could tell. be a staged oh, yeah. picture. Well, index, it looks like I would say I look, that the, it looks like how the, I look when I'm trying to pose for a thumbnail picture. The face, the the face says I'm gonna throw this disc. You wouldn't you wouldn't usually purse your lips like that if you're doing a fake throw That's unless fair. you're really good at it. Like, also, um, index finger on the rim is a dead giveaway too. Ooh, ooh. that's a I good point as well. That. Interesting. See, interesting. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Now, now Trevor's gonna just well, I'm rating. gonna reveal. Let I'm gonna reveal the division. Ma three. I didn't guess MPO. I guessed MA3, bro. Yeah. So like y'all both guessed MA3. Yeah, we'll he doesn't that. look like a pro. Both of you guessed MA3, and both of you were incorrect. As of MA4. this year, he is playing an MA1. That is the division <laughs> that he's playing in. He's playing. He's playing. Okay, wait, where is he from? He's where is Wisconsin, he from? man. Wisconsin. Oliva, Wisconsin. Time. He's Battle played three State. tournaments this year, with two of them being an MA1, one of them being an MA2. Um, I'm gonna see if he's ever played an MA3. It looks like he played an MA3 for one tournament in 2021. He then proceeded to move up to MA2, and then in MA in 2023, he started playing a mix of MA2 and MA3, and then MA1 this year. And or, you sorry, don't MA2 have to, and MA1. MA1. Anyone can play an MA1, right? Like it's correct. the rating cap is you can't play an MA2 no if floor, you're over yeah, a certain correct. rating. Correct. There's no MA1 floor on anything. anyone. Okay. And there's no also floor. no ceiling no on MA1. No floor, no ceiling. No floor, no ceiling. I will remind you, because uh, I just went through all the divisions he's played in, across all those divisions, only 10 events, zero wins. You'll now text me your rating thought. He he definitely can chuck it a little bit, but we're looking at really raw talent here. This, I mean, <laughs> so I'm, I'm changing, just to give you an idea from my gut, my gut on him, I'm changing 50 points. <laughs> That's my crazy God. work. This this could definitely be this one. There could be a lot of disparity in our guessing here. Okay, both guesses are locked. I'm sure in. our guesses are way apart. From Let each me other. get the points settled here. Let me get what Trevor's was. Okay, and the points are now. Dude, these aren't disc golf in. shoes either. Look at the shoes he's wearing. Points are now locked in as well. Okay, is this guy just a filthy guy, and he's like, he we goes had, out there and gets it done. Brody Smith submitted a guess of nine twenty. 
rated. He's wearing, car- he's wearing double cargo shorts. Trevor pockets. Staub submitted a guess of 929 rated. Both of you overguessed. Yeah, he's probably like he 80. was 892 rated. So Brody is in the lead. 28 points for Brody, 37 points for Trevor. Now we have a good flow. So the next one will go quicker. All right, let's bring up the next the picture here, Sai Guy. Pockets on those shorts. That is a lot of pockets. Oh, here is your next oh, player. Hey. A little AB jersey. This action. is uh, Ryan Travis out of Corinth, New York. He has this played guy's... 61 events. He has four career wins, and he is a certified official. What division guy, does he play in? Yeah, I've got my low guess. when he throws. Trevor has some, locked the, in his guess. All the greats do, man. I'll point out a few things. Notice the arm sleeve. Yeah, I mean, to me, this looks uh, like a guy who just annihilates forehands. <laughs> Like he Gosh, is, he is the it. forehand guy. Uh, this this guy's this guy has the biggest gap of where he could be playing. This guy yeah. has the biggest gap range. I don't know. I'm. Pretty I mean, he could be MA three or he could be MPO. Like he could literally be any one of those. Yeah, I would not be shocked. I don't know. I think he looks. What did you guess yet? I'm about to. I'm. I'm. I'm <laughs> All right, Brody's is locked in. But also, it has to do with what the first guy was. I don't think we'd go back to back MA one, which is no, what I, I wouldn't would play that. I wouldn't play that game with Hunter. He'll okay. burn you. Trevor is for sure incorrect. Trevor guessed MPO. He is not MPO. Brody, I'm I'm on the fence. I'm on the fence. What do you mean? Is he Masters? Fence, that doesn't no, count. No, it's not has Masters. Play, which has he so played Brody, more in this year? That's what you want to go on. Yes. Okay, then Brody's correct. MA two. Is I'm fine with that. Which, whatever he's played most he in went, this year. He has played 10 events in MA2 this year, three events in MA1. While I, why I was confused is he finished the season in MA1. So he seemingly uh, moved up at the end of the year into MA1. But I probably if, you look, that. if you look at his history, <laughs> he is an MA2 player. Like, yeah, I mean, that last year. So well, Brody, I, I, admittedly, my own logic is kind of tough thinking there because he probably is an MA1 player. I was, I was leaning towards MA1, but you locked in what you okay. wanted. And we can I, can I be okay with accepting that? But also, we should change it to like if somebody has played Absolutely. three or more yeah. like recently, like I that should agree. probably be. That was the train yeah. of thought I was on. But then yeah. you were you were, you, for, you were an advocate for you were an advocate for the more more people. So Brody's locked <laughs> in his ratings that. guess. Trevor. Um. Okay. MA2 just jumped up there. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, he looks like an athlete to me. It looks like he can mash that forehand. I guess that's all he can do if he's still stuck down there. Um, hmm. Okay, let's see here. Let's go. Yeah, the elbow sleeve also tells me he throws a lot of forehands. He does. I would assume that. He sent actually two different angles from two different tees, and elbow sleeve was on in both, and he was right, ripping a forehand. In both, so um, that you way, watch out for those very guys. athletic, very athletic position, though. But Absolutely. again, you don't see that many guys throw the forehand super low like that. That looks okay. like a guy who's played a little baseball. Both of y'all are in the exact same ballpark. Both of you are again too high. We had Brody Smith come in at nine twenty. Really? Trevor at nine eighteen. Hey. Ryan Travis was eight ninety seven rated. Meaning what Brody we, like, with the getting the right division has eleven and a half points. Trevor has got okay, twenty one. What are these people? Is this what in people the are doing now? Playing in MA one. What's happening what, right now? That's what I'm saying. Like I, I well, think people are getting bullied wins. up into the higher. division. What is the cap for MA two? He has four wins and they're all. The cap for MA two is like nine twenty. I think isn't the it? tough part is he won two, than that. He won two MA two events this year so i think that's probably so what? what's going on stay so? feasting brother he won two ma2 events this year and then it moved up moved if you up don't rate high enough up, tell so. the pdj their system i saw I uh, i'm gonna pull up i'm gonna pull up this tweet from chael sunnid that i think this is incredible uh i'll hit it i'll hit you with it here in a second i gotta find it but we can go to the next one all right let's bring up the next guy here silas yeah <laughs> Oh my gosh! Okay. There actually is there actually is some things to gather from this. There, I chose the picture that I felt gave more context overall. Um, this is Kyle Krauchhaus, Krauchhaus, out of Durango, Colorado. Um, he has thirty-eight career events, eleven career wins, and he is a certified official. I submitted mine. Okay, he's got he's got the uh, he's got the nice retrieve. Uh, 
Shoot. Spinning the Frisbee classic. Pan- Panda on the head is a wild move. He's familiar with that Frisbee. He submitted two pictures. Both had the panda on the head. I felt this one gave <laughs> you at least more information to guess. The other one was a little bit just like that. Could He could be doing anything right now. Trevor submitted his division. We're waiting on Brody. I'm locked in. Brody submitted his division. One of you is right. Brody Smith guessed MA1. Trevor Staub guessed MPO. Probably be MPO. Kyle Krauchhaus, Krikhaus, I don't know how to say his name, is an MPO player. Yes, you guys sir. Trevor? Uh, That's, that guy, yeah. I mean, look at the arms. He's got, so, guy, he's got some good definition going on there. Where, where, say, from? where is he from? He's from Colorado. He has, this is an interesting one for me because he has won three MPO tournaments this year. Coming wow. second at one, fourth at one, fifth at one. But he's only accepted cash at one that he came in seventh at. So he is an what? MJ18 player it's when he's not pay. playing MPO. So it seems he must be saving it for Junior Worlds. And maybe that was the cash after Junior Worlds is what I'm gathering from that. Oh. So Those Colorado guys, there's some dogs out there. Like winning an MPO out there is pretty good. Brody has locked in his guess. I have the quote okay. too. So he responded to a tweet. For those that don't know, Chael Sonnen, uh, legendary UFC fighter. He responded to a tweet where it was talking about this like 15-year-old freshman in high school, like going up in um going up and wrestling like older people, basically. And he, the Chael Sonnen responded saying, like, he doesn't really think going up in skill level makes a whole lot of sense. He says, if you can be a king of your group, go enjoy the throne. So <laughs> that, that is what I'll that say. That's like whole, inspiration for all guy. the MA3 sandbaggers out there. That's what I'm saying to the last guy. Just go be the king in MA2 and win everything and then there move up. Y'all again are, are coming in pretty close to each other. Um, so Brody Smith came in at 1,008 rated. Trevor Staub guessed 983 oh, not that close. rated. It's not close at all. The, well, I guess it's close mainly because 30, he's right in the middle at 993 rated. Ah, and Trevor close. guessing Trevor's the division closer. correct. That's five huge. Points, Trev, because he had it on That's, 10, five points. 993, Kyle, Panda. The, some are saying good. he's the dude yeah. perfect Panda. I don't know. No. All right, final no, one know, here. I know who the dude perfect Panda is. We all know who the dude perfect Panda is. Now we're at 4263 <laughs> for Trevor. And then we have 39. Okay. What is happening here? Is this a putt? 50, what is this? 63 <laughs> for Pete doing? <laughs> what is happening what is right now? 63 for Trevor, 54 for Brody, if I'm doing Dang, I got nine how, is, how is his leg like that? This is a this perfect is, one because this could this be is, anything. This is Derek Hagland from Alberta, Canada. Oh, uh, and it's Canada too. Member since 2019, 23 Ooh. career events, zero career wins. Mm. What division is Derek? Dirk, sorry, not Derek. Dirk. What division is tough, Dirk tough playing? Scene, Hunter. That is tough. I thought there's an E I there. I want to oh, say something, gosh, but dude, this guy. I'm gonna say the other thing. I'm gonna regret it. I'm sure. What is this okay. stance? Yo, this, is basically like those, this is like He's those. This is like those Bigfoot pictures that get submitted. And they're all blurry. Like that's basically what we're looking at right y'all now. Y'all have both locked in, and y'all both guessed the same division, MA2, and y'all oh, were both. Oh incorrect MA3. i'm trying to see when this guy has played two ma2 events ever they're back in 2019 he moved up to mpo the same year and has stayed in mpo ever since what <laughs> is an this MPO. is Course canada brody it's this Star is Course a canada. MPO, mpo player uh his career earnings he might be lining up an upshot are 555 might just be 555 dollars career earning 23 Dude. events zero wins I don't what remember. Is Dirk Haglin's rating. Oh man, I don't remember. This, with this the guy Canada. might be. Bo- this guy might be bogleged. This could separate us so big here. This is crazy. I don't remember what the Canada guy was last time. It was like criminal. What is? <sighs> I don't know. I don't think there's a recent photo. I think this guy's I'm trying just to throw one us. out there. There's no this shot. Could be, this could be ludicrous. Oh, this guy's, oh, this guy's gonna tear his ACL. Okay, let me He's do the calculator man. out here. He's All got right. Mobility. Because there's nothing else to go off of this photo other than okay. You got to use intuition, man. Y'all submitted pretty far away from each other. Ooh, I like to hear that. We have Brody Smith come in at 985. Oh. Trevor Staub come in at 961. 
He's I'm gonna win this. You're Kirk cooked. Hagland is 949. Yeah, Trevor I knew it. Two and O. Let's what go. A final round there for nobody, there's nobody rated that high in Canada. Who is playing MPO at 940? 940. <laughs> well, it's Canada. Some of them it's are Canada. leagues, but he he cashed at a B tier. He came in sixth at a B tier in Canada. Uh, let's look at the B tier. The highest rated player in this B tier was 1,005. And then it was 976, 967, 965. Um, Dirk was 965 at that time when he cashed. Oh, so he's been slipping. Fell off. Let's look at his ratings history, actually. The highest he's ever been rated is 971 last year. Wow. And he is now, the lowest Seriously, he's been rated was 894 back in 2020. But he is uh, oh, just bad, man. It's currently 949. Baffles my mind that some people are playing these divisions. Flipping. There Clearly you have the it. That PD was the Trevor's up to 2 0. I'm hungry. Clearly, the All PDJ is right. not doing their job of telling people what divisions they should be playing in. We'll get a uh, we'll get a few few topics in before we get to our story. Reminder: If you want to submit a topic that's going to be talked about during this part, you can check the link in the description down below and send that in. Or if you want to be a part of the ratings guessing game you just witnessed, send those pictures and a link to your PDJ profile over to Hunter at FoundationDiscs.com. Um, we'll go with this topic first. This is from Colton Sparks. He said, in theory, couldn't I sign up for a PDGA tournament under someone else's name and PDGA number? What's stopping from going state to a state that I would not be recognized playing a tournament using my local rivals PDGA number in order to tank his rating? Should something <laughs> be done about this? Um, yeah, I mean, if you get caught doing that, you should be absolutely you'll be banned, banned for from life. the PGA. Well, the, the, you and can just um, the tournament. Oh, yeah, you I'll can say, dispute it when it goes on your record. Tournament. When, so, like, yeah. if I went onto my PDGA and I saw someone had been playing as me, Ooh. I can dispute it and tell the PDGA that's let not me. me. Let no, me throw this saying, out like, there. The person Anybody that does it should to, get banned. I'm PDGA number 63415. If you are a good player... <laughs> you got to be at least like 970 or above. You are more than welcome to use my PDGA. Go ahead and renew it, and then you can use it and get my rating up, and I will not dispute it or but turn see, you in. Trevor also should be banned for even saying that. He could be. What are you going to – are you going to submit me to the PDGA? I'm you not. just submitted yourself. It's the on PDGA, record right now on this podcast. Wa- what are they going to do? Get rid Bam of my you. already unactive membership? That would actually be sick, kind though. A, Being banned from the PDGA would be kind of – Kind of sick. If I'm on kind the of, probation it'd be kind list, of a jerk move. So I don't know if they'd do it or not. Yeah, <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind being right there in between Eric Oakley and uh, and A. Trevor's on a 12 month probation. Brad's yeah. like, hey, I need someone to run the tournament. I'm like, can't be Trev. Yes, <laughs> <gonna> be guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, no, I've did, always said that. Know. Well, what I've discussed more is creating a new PDGA membership yeah. every time you want to just kind of. It's like declaring bankruptcy, basically. Well, mm-hmm. here's my thing is what like i get what's wrong with it but from the pdga's like it's not from the pdga's point of view why do they care about the creating a new one creating a new one you're paying them if the ratings they change don't. like they don't the it only way happened. is if someone used it and then tried to get into a pro tour event or tried to get into something where a rating mattered Wait, but like, why do they care well i'm saying if they, it's like if it's me and trevor right in and, the not in the identity fraud scenario you're not talking about that right you're talking about the creating a new one no, I'm saying in any of these scenarios, the PDGA themselves, oh. like if it's just like two local, like so he's saying, should something be done about this? Like yeah, right now, how it works because they want they want to keep they want to keep for the sake of integrity. Enough. Yeah, <laughs> what I'm saying, I'm saying yeah, how it sits what? right now. How it sits right now is Trevor can flag that rating that round. Yeah. They can now remove it, and then they can reach out to the tournament director and be like, "Hey, either did you put the wrong PDGA number in? Because I've done that before, and it went on someone else's, and sure. they, I fixed it." And then if it's like, no, this is what they submitted. Okay, what's the email address? Find it out. Suspend that person. It's done. Like, I don't think something has to be done beyond that. But no. like, no. I'm saying like, should something be done about this in like the preventative measure in Trevor's case of like, if so, if he, he got his rating up to 980, if he's not trying to qualify for uh, like US AMs or something, which then someone could dispute, if he's not trying to qualify for that, the PDGA like, it's just a number at the end of the day. Like people aren't using that for, for anything. I guess what I'm saying. Well, I mean, there's already enough people out there bashing the PGA ratings. The last thing you need to do is have another thing in place, allowing people to manipulate their PGA rating and you do nothing about it. Yeah. It's just, it is in place. Like I don't ratings fraud. Like what well, I guess the, the other way would be that you have to bring your ID with you when you check into a tournament. 
you know you there's the pj number or something there's these yeah. tiktok accounts that are dedicated to finding and calling out handicap frauders or sandbaggers they'll like look at local mm -hmm. scramble results and then they'll look at their gin numbers and they'll cross compare it and they'll be like are you sure about that and that's electric you and i might need to start looking into pdj ratings and be like the ratings fraud detectives and see if we can find the sandbaggers because it's so funny they'll be like we have uh, people interesting anonymously submit we have people anonymously submit people who they think might be sandbagging like who people yeah, who they should. think are intentionally tanking rounds to like mm. stay in a certain yeah. division and we can go we'll like the bottom of it investigate we can yeah. go look at I'll... some pdga history and be like yeah. this guy's either injured or he's sandbagging that could be fun mm -hmm. Uh, okay, final one before we do our final story here. This is actually from Reddit because I need more topics, guys. Submit some more topics if you have them. More this topics. Do it. Steve 2762 over on Reddit said, most people have 15 shirts, but they cycle through five of them. What are the five discs that you are regularly, go regularly going to in your bag? So essentially, you got your bag that's full of 25, 30 discs. What are your four, five, whatever that number is of like, these are my go-tos. The rest are just kind of there if i need them rock uh slammer cash raider stalker That's yeah mine for sure pa3 md3 zone thunderbird destroyer yeah roach vulture 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 roach i don't even think the vulture's in it roach oh. it'd be roach uh zone buzz nuke for sure raptor nuke yeah, yeah that makes sense only one i didn't know if you if you would throw a sneak of passion in there i think i throw i think i throw the raptor more than the passion because i throw the raptor forehand and backhand that makes sense we got a new we threw a new roach today the seasonal glow and honestly it had some really nice. disability to it it's quite Ooh. nice I was, I was pretty surprised by it trevor was leaning into it on anheuser and it was actually it's a straight vulture, flat. Though. yeah it was, straight it was vulture it's just straight vulture, vulture. Always straight vulture. All How right. have we never stamped a vulture just a straight vulture? And it's an actually a straight vulture. We should. That'd People be would love still it. time. Still time. Just a straight vulture. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Has that been said in years though? Like we internally I say, say it, it like every it time I'm around in, Brody, at least. <laughs> <I'm saying laughs> People that on video this. enough. I don't know. You, well, me, and, I'm, me and Ezra are going to start the practice rounds again next year, so there'll be a lot you of just a really laid on thick. Laid on, there'll yeah, be a lot of just straight vulture holes out there. Sure. There you go. All right, final story. This comes from Luke Hammer. Uh, and Good this name. is more so less a, less a story, more this is a phenomenal idea, and I want to see it implemented out everywhere. So okay. he said, last year around Christmas, I played in a random draw doubles white elephant three-disc challenge. A lot to process. It took place at Golden Gate Park in San Francisco, home of the Polecat World Championship. So we show up with three discs each. Uh, naturally a putter mid and driver. So he brought a uh, AGL disc a Magnolia and a money tree. I don't know what the money tree is, but Sounds anyways, like that's what he brought. Mates. So the disc presents are all wrapped and they're placed on the table and you draw cards. He drew a pretty early card. There are about 30 folks there. So he went to the table, picked out a present. He knew would be desirable as it was big, turned out to have beer, weed and $20 in it. Plus some discs. He doesn't remember except for a cloud breaker. Literally the next person stole it from him. A gift was allowed to be stolen three times before it's done. So that's one. Next present I grab is an MVP box. I didn't know it was brought specifically by a guy for himself, so he proceeded to steal it immediately as well. There's two. <laughs> Next gift I grab is pretty unremarkable, but I, it has a DGA sale and gets stolen by a long timer who likes flippy light discs. There's number three. Next gift, I don't even remember, except for it had chocolate in it because yet again, it got stolen immediately. That's four. At this point, <laughs> it just became a whole joke about how can, how can I can't keep a gift to save my life. Every time someone steals from me, everyone laughs and generally makes for a good time. I'm not invested in the disc at this point, so I'm, I'm loving it and happy to be the butt of the joke that still stands to this day when I see the guys. It happens twice more, so finally my sixth set is a pack of four. I get to choose between the drivers, end up with a bullet, a justice, escape, and a raider. I decided I didn't need the raider. We drew random dubs, and me and my partner end up taking second. Super fun event. Please steal this idea for a Christmas round video. If I could figure it out, I'd love to fly out participate. You guys do fun inclusion videos like that. Cheers. Love your podcast. Even tour life. Don't be mad. Dang. Uh, I'm not. I'm only not a high club member because I have two young kiddos and money's tight right now. First off, totally understand. If you're not in a position to be a high club member, please never feel pressured to do so. Second off, what an idea! Everyone brings three discs. Maybe not for a video, but what a fun event! You bring well, three discs and you're just wrapped in a bag, and then that's what you're playing random draw dubs with or like a, a fun weekly with. 
Yeah, this is um, this is called Yankee Swap, and they yeah, did it. Yeah, white elephant it, Yankee Swap. Yeah, but yeah. they did it incorrectly. Why? Well, there's everybody has their own rules for it. Not really. Like it sounds like <laughs> once played he, it, I've probably played it at least five times in my life, <laughs> like differently. Once, once multiple people had gifts. Uh, you're able. To, well, first off, if your gift gets stolen, you can either pick a new gift. That's what he was that, doing. Yeah, that hasn't been opened, or you could take someone else's gift. Once yeah, right. a gift has been taken twice, it can't be taken again. Yep. Right. As and you explained. All, yeah. I don't, where? Yeah. Where did you go wrong? He was taking. So a new his gift, gift was getting stolen. He, really and he was wanted, going back so, to the table. Yeah. So if he, the first gift he got was what a cloud breaker. It had one in there. Yeah. Right. So if he wanted that, as soon as he went to the table and grabbed another gift and someone took that, he could take the cloud breaker. Yeah, and now the yeah. cloud breaker has been taken twice. No one could take it from him. Correct. Good point. He was just saying he didn't really care about the disc. So he just kept going back to the table. Some people and every do, time he would open some it, people, oh, he just some kept people do the no steal backs, though. That is, I've heard of that before. We actually do a white elephant disc swap, uh, usually in foundation. Yeah, we, we just we, do. But yeah. I just thought it was a fun idea of like, he was just saying there's like, like a thousand dollars. So that, that could be a fun, like, Christmas. It's, it's like way three to do discs, it. and then you go and play the round with it. Yeah. yeah so I like it could that. also be fun of like, we bring in a few other people and we make it like maybe there's six people and we're doing doubles. 2v2v2 and everyone brings them in i just think it's a fun idea not necessarily as a video but that just sounded like a good time of like yeah, yeah, 20 event. people show up with three discs and then you're all just drawing one guy I has three dx leopards discs. the next person has like three 30 royal line discs like that's just a great time i like it it's a good time oh there you go if you want to take that idea run it in your your local league uh, around Christmas time, I think it's a phenomenal idea. I think it, people would have a lot of fun. So Ooh, that wraps you. up this week of the off season, where we're going to keep you entertained all off season long. If you want to get some news, check out Grip Lock and Tour Life, where we cover everything that's going on in the off season, all the player movement, all of that fun stuff. And this is just for entertainment purposes only. So make sure you're submitting your stories and topics at the link in the description down below. And don't forget to send your picture and PDGA profile to hunter at foundationdisc.com if you want to be involved in that game. And we will see you again next week.